Hi, it's Dwyer. April the 18th, 2019. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk boxing. Let's talk Anthony Joshua. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now it makes no sense. Really is counterintuitive. But in boxing, sometimes the most dangerous opponent is the last minute replacement. Right here on YouTube, what I want you to do is to go back. There was a dominant champion with a great jab, Led Waba. And at the last minute, he had a new opponent, a guy named Manny Pacquiao. The announcers, Jim Lampley, a few other guys, barely knew how to pronounce Pacquiao's name. By the way, this is the fight to look at if you're thinking about Pacquiao against Errol Spence. Well, Edwaba was completely unprepared for Manny Pacquiao's hand speed, foot speed, power, explosiveness. Not a lot was known about Manny. Ledwaba certainly wasn't preparing for an opponent like that. More recently, you had unbeaten middleweight Jamal Charlo. He needed a last-minute replacement. In comes Matt Korobov. Now understand the kind of person who is a last-minute replacement. This is the fighter who's ready. Who's always ready. This is, dare I say, the opportunist. He's in shape for whatever reason. He's been training for his own fight. He's a risk-taker. They say to him, hey man, do you want a nationally televised bout against the champ or do you want a nationally televised bout against this rank contender? By the time the end of the sentence is uttered, the opportunist last minute replacement personality type says, yeah, of course, I'll figure out the details later. Right? Training camp, money, look. I'll get paid after I beat this guy in the next fight. Quite frankly, I thought Karabov beat Jamal Charlo. The judges didn't. I'll leave it up to you to look at that fight. Right? Let's just say Charlo was training for one person, ended up fighting another guy, and in my opinion, got spanked. Let's look at heavyweights. A guy named Kirk Johnson was going to fight heavyweight champion Lennox Lewis. Right? At the last minute, Kirk Johnson couldn't go. So a guy who was not allowed to fight at the Olympics, Vitaly Klitschko, stepped in. The resulting fight, quite frankly, is one of the most important fights in heavyweight history. That's no overstatement. Understand, both Lewis and Vitaly Klitschko ended up holding the heavyweight title for several years. Several years. Right? I would argue that those two guys are the best heavyweights of the post Mike Tyson era. Right? Tyson Fury has an opportunity, in my opinion to get added to the club he just needs to do more right his comeback he's fought Deontay Wilder and a bunch of guys in witness protection okay fair enough but just to understand Vitaly Klitschko starts that fight in such a way fight was in LA I remember Vitaly entered the ring to the Hotel California by the Eagles he starts the fight in such a way where the crowd was with him Lewis looked like he was going to get knocked out. Then Lewis starts looping his punches. You have to look at it. <laughs> you have to look at the film. It's one of the great adjustments in recent memory. Lewis starts looping his punches. He cuts Vitaly. 
Vitaly looks like he's prepared to lose an eye to get the heavyweight title. Right? The ref and the doctors weren't going to allow that to happen. They stopped the fight. Klitschko was livid. You, the boxing fan, watching the fight, understood. This is a classic. Everyone wanted Lewis to fight this guy again. Right? Kurt Johnson was somewhere in the background, right? This was the guy. Lennox Lewis retired. Never set foot again in the ring as a fighter. Think about it. So against that backdrop, we have another British heavyweight champion. This guy's unbeaten. Like Lennox Lewis, this guy won the gold medal at the Olympics. He's crossed the Atlantic. He was to fight in New York City against Gerald Miller, who decided, what the heck, now's as good a time as any to fail another drug test. Right? Sadly, this is not the first drug test that Miller has failed. And, of course, after the first one, Miller said, what, me? How can I fail the drug test? Then, of course, the story evolved into, oh, I was taking this supplement that I didn't know would trigger a positive. <coughs> so now, of course, years later, after failing this drug test, Miller is saying, oh, what? How could I fail a drug test? I don't need drugs. Okay, whatever. Just understand that Joshua has some guys who would make a great fight against him and would be great for boxing who are simply unavailable. Right? As you can imagine, since guy number one is out the door because he failed a drug test, the Joshua people want to make sure that the person they pick is in Vada's drug testing protocol and has been getting tested. In other words, Joshua's been getting tested now for weeks. You can't have a new guy come in who hasn't been getting tested for weeks, right? And who might, theoretically, have been enjoying life a bit too much outside of the ring, right, with supplements or whatever, right, without being tested. So that eliminates a guy with a share of the heavyweight title, Manuel Char. No one is saying here that Char has done anything wrong. Right after all, he was a guy who wasn't scheduled to fight on Joshua's card. But he's eliminated from consideration because he hasn't been recently tested by Vada. Then there's Kubrat Pulev. Right? Kubrat Pulev had a fight, got a cut. Right? As you can imagine, a lot of fans at a lot of boxing commissions are going to see a guy entering the ring with a cut. And they're going to think to themselves, man, this guy's entering the ring in an unfair position. <laughs> right? The last thing Pulev or Joshua wants is for Pulev to enter the ring with a the cut. Then Joshua opens that cut and we the fans say, come on, that wasn't a real fight. Right? <laughs> the guy was at a disadvantage. Also, Pulev is in hot water politically with several regulatory commissions because he, of course, without consent, decided he was going to kiss a female reporter. So Pulev is out of the running. Then you have Adam Konacki, <coughs> who would have filled the seats. Guy fighting out of New York. They claim about 6,000 seats need to be sold. Konaki, of course, destroyed Gerald Washington and is unbeaten. But he has a contractual commitment to another card. So he's out of the running, right? In my opinion, the guys who should be on Joshua's short list, and I understand personalities are involved, and I understand there have been some disagreements in the past. But to me, 
the guys who should be on the short list, who to me would maintain the credibility of the sport, who are deserving of a shot at the heavyweight title, right? The first name is Dylan White. Understand, Dylan White has earned the shot. Folks, he beat Joseph Parker, the only other guy to do so is Anthony Joshua. Folks, he beat Lucas Brown and Lucas Brown was unbeaten. Let me also say too, the short six week period before the fight shouldn't be a big problem for Dylan White because he's fought Joshua before. His training camp would be targeted. He knows what to expect. Let me point out too, that first fight's interesting. That first round's interesting. Then you notice something seems to be wrong with White's shoulder. Right? I don't think that first fight is the final word on what happens when these two guys are in the ring. I think the fight would be spirited. I think it would be a great fight for fans. Now here's where money comes in. And sometimes this is what kills deals. White feels that he was offered slave wages by Joshua, right, and Eddie Hearn. Now I understand, in the real world, we hear that a guy's been offered millions of dollars or pounds for a fight, and if we were in his shoes and they said, yes, I'll give you two million pounds for the fight, before the sentence is over, we would say, hey, I'll take that. You know, we'd be thinking, oh my goodness, this could pay for a lot of vacations. Right? Junior's really going to private school now, right? But these boxers understand that there's something called a gate. There's something called television money. Right? Boxers understand that they're in a position to make big money and might not be in that position if they get destroyed by the heavyweight champ in a fight for less than market value. So Dylan White wants real money. Gerald Miller, according to reports, was going to make $6.5 million. Anthony Joshua for this fight is set to make, according to reports, $30 million. Since the champ is the one in the pinch here, right? His opponent got disqualified before the match. Since the champ wants to make a big impression on American fans and needs a credible opponent. In my opinion, the champ needs to pay a little bit of a premium here. Maybe a big part, a, a big premium here to his possible opponent and needs to reconsider his offer to Dylan White. If I'm AJ, I should be willing to pay Dylan White more than Gerald Miller was going to make. Let's face it, Gerald Miller didn't beat Joseph Parker. Gerald Miller didn't beat an unbeaten Lucas Brown. So I hope the guys can get together and work it out. Let me also state the obvious. Clearly Joshua should be fighting white in the United Kingdom. Both are British. But you take the opportunities as they come, don't you? Right, Joshua is set to fight in New York City. That's where the fight would take place. If I'm white, I take the deal if Joshua sweetens it a little bit. Now we know in boxing there are always people behaving badly. If they aren't able to bridge the gap, then the other fighter who I think deserves a shot at the heavyweight title and who would be credible who the fans would know is a guy who had Luis Ortiz excuse me, it's a guy who had Deontay Wilder and obviously the fighter I'm talking about is Luis Ortiz in such trouble that at the start of a round at the start of a round before a punch was thrown the doctor the doctor examined Deontay Wilder. Now folks, let me just say that was unfortunate. 
That was an irregularity. If Wilder was in trouble at the end of the preceding round, he shouldn't have been able to have then sat down like I am right now in his corner with his crew and then after resting for a minute gotten up off the stool and then been given additional time by the doctor. That's outrageous. The window of opportunity that Luis Ortiz had to be heavyweight champ closed in that moment. But understand how close Ortiz came to being heavyweight champ. Had the doctor looking in Wilder's eyes reached the conclusion that Wilder was concussed, Luis Ortiz would have won that fight without throwing another punch. Understand too, that fight was in New York City. New Yorkers know Luis Ortiz. They know he gave a reigning unbeaten heavyweight champion a whale of a fight. You announce that he's the next opponent for Anthony Joshua and the fans will be all in. Let's also remember how that Wilder fight ended. Luis Ortiz hitting the canvas multiple times. In other words, it was a rough and tumble affair. No one was there trying to hide from the action. Punches were thrown. Punches were landed. A guy got dropped. It was exciting. <coughs> That's the kind of fight Joshua wants to make an impression on American fight fans. Let's face it too. Ortiz allows a basis of comparison between Joshua and Deontay Wilder. Right? We've seen Ortiz against Wilder. Let's now see what he can do against Joshua. Can Joshua do better than Wilder? Who really is top dog at heavyweight? Now other than White and Ortiz, let me throw out two other names. Joseph Parker. Let's face it. The first Joshua Parker fight was tainted by the referee. The ref wouldn't allow Parker to fight inside. We all saw that, didn't we? And even without the inability even without the ability to fight inside, which Parker can do if refs don't stop him. We know just looking at the CompuBox numbers, just looking at the fight that Parker took away Joshua's right hand. Right, Joshua doesn't land big right hands in that fight. That fight goes the distance. In fact, that's the only time Joshua has gone the distance in his career. Let's also face it too. That Dylan White fight, which was close, is marred by the fact that they made the wrong call on the knockdown. Right? You can't get knocked down without the other guy landing a punch. The fact that the fight was so close, the fact that Dylan White looks like he's had a car crash in the 12th round of that fight. Barely makes it to the finish. Should tell you that Parker, who is a former unbeaten heavyweight champion, <coughs> is world class. I think Parker Joshua would have credibility. Let me also say too, the six week short time period to prepare won't be that big of an issue to Parker because, of course, Parker has fought Joshua before. Parker has seen Joshua. Finally, let's throw a new name into the mix. I think this guy deserves a lot more attention. His fight against Joseph Parker could easily have been scored the other way. And that's Andy Ruiz. 
Understand, as I sit here, I still think that Andy Ruiz has the fastest hands in the heavyweight division. Understand, too, Andy Ruiz doesn't really have a back foot. Right? Parker has to abdicate the pocket against him. Just imagine a fight where AJ doesn't back up, Andy Ruiz doesn't back up, and they're both throwing punches. I'm telling you, some men wilt under that pressure. Joe Hanks, who was unbeaten when he fought Andy Ruiz, wilted. Right now, Ruiz has only lost to Joseph Parker. I think Ruiz, if your plan A, Dylan White, your plan B, Luis Ortiz, your plan C, Joseph Parker, if those plans aren't possible, go to plan D. I think Andy Ruiz is an underrated heavyweight. I think his hand speed would be an eye-opener. And just based on the styles, I think the fight would be very high octane, whoever wins it. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. If there are other guys, and I understand Michael Hunter's name has been bandied about, if there are other guys who you feel would make for a great fight, against Anthony Joshua, and who would also be able to fill the seats, generate excitement in New York City, then I hope you leave their names in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.